Welcome to another weekly reflection from Salisbury Cathedral. I'm Kenneth Padley, the Canon Treasurer, one of the clergy at the Cathedral. The holiday season is upon us. Salisbury is full of visitors. The streets of the city are teeming with tourists, and it is encouraging to hear many international languages back among the mix. Lots of these visitors naturally want to come and look around the Cathedral. It's a delight to see them walk through the doors and to be struck by first impressions of the interior. They pause, stare and wonder. People go as well as come during the summer recess and many colleagues and members of the cathedral congregations are away from home. The choir is having a well-deserved rest and we are blessed by visiting choirs who come and lead the musical aspects of our worship. Already we've been honoured to welcome singers from Wuppertal in Germany and from Indianapolis in the United States. I don't know about you, but I sense that many people really want to travel again this summer. After two years of restrictions, there is a yearning to get out and about. That said, I'm also mindful that some may want to travel but are unable. Some are still nervous about interpersonal contact after the pandemic. The plans of others have been impacted by disruption in the travel industry. Strikes on the railways, backlogs at the borders, lack of staff among flight operators. However, the most significant break on travel has surely come in the form of rising prices. The cost of living squeeze has inevitably led some families to cut back on discretionary spending, including leisure travel. Despite these challenges, there are fewer barriers to travel in our age than there were in the past. Previous generations would have been more familiar with societal as well as financial bars to travel. For example, in the early modern period, Puritan preachers and writers commended constancy, and so they told folks not to stray from their local communities. There were several reasons why they argued this. Firstly, Puritans associated travel with social disruption. Those who moved from place to place were suspected to be vagabonds, sturdy beggars who obtained food and money through intimidation and violence. Secondly, travel could be morally corrosive. Those who travelled might stop at wayside inns where alcohol and other distractions were available. But most worryingly, however, some Protestants regarded travel as too similar to pilgrimage, the visiting of holy sites and relics that had been discredited at the Reformation. Thus, William Googe, a Presbyterian minister in London during the reign of Charles I, thundered against those who wasted time in touring. Googe said that wandering may be counted a sin in superfluous gentlemen who upon mere curiosity travel from place to place and that many times to idolatrous countries where they are seduced to idolatry. For William Googe and his associates, travel was interwoven with the perceived threat that Roman Catholicism wanted to inveigle its way back into the hearts and minds of the English people. I'm glad that we live in a more liberated age. Travel today extends us and challenges us because it brings us into contact with new people, new places, and new ideas. Travel is ultimately about encounter with difference, something of the diversity of the world which God has made. I have always appreciated opportunities to see somewhere new, or to try a new food, or new activity. There is much to be celebrated in this. Newness stretches us and develops us. At heart, it is exciting. Now, I've been talking about holidays and travel as if the two are the same, but of course they're not. Holidays may include travel, but not necessarily so. A holiday is a time of reset, relaxation and refreshment, when we take a break from work and domestic tasks. You don't need to go away from home in order to be on holiday. 
undergirding the value of holiday are some important biblical principles. One of these is the idea of Sabbath. Sabbath is most readily associated with the Jewish tradition, preserving one day in seven for worship of God and for time with the family. The Jews keep Sabbath on Saturday because Saturday is the seventh day of the week, the day when in the book Genesis God was said to have taken a break from his task of creation. Christians have inherited aspects of the Jewish idea of Sabbath, even if most churches keep Sunday, not Saturday, as their special day. This is because Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday, with the result that mainstream churches maintain the Jewish seven-day cycle, but shift their focus from the last day of the week onto the first. William Googe, who I mentioned earlier, was fastidious about the need for Sabbath time with God on Sunday, however much he disapproved of travel for leisure. A regular time of Sabbath within the week is important for everyone, whatever our faith background or none. We all need a break to recharge the batteries. I wouldn't be so prescriptive as to say this must be on Sunday, but I do think that time with God, whenever we fit it in, is part of a healthy weekly cycle. Sabbath is about a break from the norm, about doing things differently. And it is this notion of difference which goes to the heart of what a holiday is about. That is because, etymologically, a holiday is a holy day, and holiness is all about difference. Christians are called to be holy, to be different, to stand out from the crowd. Too often, Christian difference is awkward, angular and unattractive. However, our calling is to be distinctively different, alluringly different, indicating through what we say and do that reality is greater than the limitations of our brokenness, indicating that God made the world, redeems the world and rules the world. So whether you are travelling this summer or not, whether you are on holiday at the present or in the near future, my prayer is that the God of holiness would refresh you through Sabbath rest, and that through this rest he would reveal himself to others through the radiant difference of your life. Bye for now.